Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Frozen Fortunes. This is going to be a good one, for one very good reason. Sven is back. But before any of that, I, I talked to you guys in the summer about a guy I'd signed uh, that wouldn't be able to join us until December. Or I actually said January, but I didn't realize it was December. And that's this guy. This is a manual Emoa. He's a Ghanaian goalkeeper. Uh, we picked him up on a free transfer. He's on less money than uh, Kanate is as well, um, which is why I felt like it was a reasonable deal for us. Now, obviously, he's not got the same potential ceiling as Kanate, but I feel like he'll be a good goalkeeper for us for quite some time uh, until such time as someone better comes along. And for a free transfer and to make five million on Kanate, I couldn't really turn it down. So this is him. And on the on the outside, you might look at him and be like, well, he looks about the same. But when you look at the comparisons, you can very much see uh, the reason I was so interested in this guy. I don't, oh my God. So when you look at their attributes, you can see there's some areas where Kanate is clearly better. But when we actually look at it as an overview, you, you can see that for the most part, in most areas, they are very, very similar. Aerial, almost the same. Distribution, almost the same. The only area where Kanate really exceeds is his mental game. It's slightly better. Uh, in fact, fairly better in a lot of areas. However, Amoa, better speed, better physical, better shot stopping. I think for the meantime, this is a good signing for us. And he should tie the server nicely until something better comes along, basically. And a free transfer. You can't really go past that. Anyway, we've got quite a few fixtures to talk about, and uh, believe me, uh, there's some good stuff in here, so let's get into those. Actually, before we do that, since it is Tuesday, it's time to thank new patrons, and that this week is Andrew and Samuel. So seriously, guys, massive thanks to you. Um, seriously, it's incredible. And to all of you that just watched the videos, once again, it's just fantastic. So um, let's get into things properly now. Our first game in this spell, we went away to AAB, who I think at the time might well have been bottom of the league, and yet again, we did not look that convincing. We created a few more chances in this one, and some stuff I tried in the second half, I think had a better effect. Uh, and it's definitely led us down the right path in all the successive games. Uh, but perhaps not this one. This one, again, we were very fortunate. Mark Yakim, again, off the bench, 85 minutes. I think he was off the bench. It must have been. Came on and grabbed us the winner. This guy has picked us up some serious points. Uh, he scored the winner against Norgeland. He scored the winner against Orborg. And he also set up the equaliser against Bromby. This lad is responsible for our real saving our asses in a few situations. But even more surprising than that is that while this game was going on, or I think just after, FC Copenhagen lost at home to Kyrgyz, which all meant that we actually finished match day 13 technically top of the league, which means we got 1.8 million for that. So that was very, very nice. Next up, we found ourselves away at Bromby in the cup. And would you believe it? We actually got through. And honestly, predominantly thanks to our boy. Jonas Fennigsen, man of the match, two goals on the night, great performance, an Aldo safety penalty. I don't know how he ended up taking penalties. I would have thought that Jonas Fennigsen would have took it because he was on his hat-trick, and I don't think I'd taken him off. So that's a weird one on that one. Uh, Vitus Yule did get one. Well, he actually put them in front early on in this one. They weren't that good. Neither were we in terms of chance creation in this game. Um, I think we were still a little bit fortunate. However, I was still kind of working on a few things. And I found out, or not found out, the thing I'd basically been doing this much, I've been using the pre-match sort of... um opposition reports to find out playmakers of teams and marking them out the game and against the teams that play this style of tactic which is the one we saw in the last episode both teams played it that sort of um four two three one kind of system uh, with the wide very very high pushed up wingers it seems to work if they're playing an advanced playmaker in that attacking midfield role you can just mark him out the game or if it's a deeper advanced playmaker you can mark him out the game as well and it seems to work quite well against four four twos however this works even better Against Randers away in the league, they really have fallen off the pace quite considerably. They're right down at the bottom towards the league now. It's crazy. Budimir did score in this game. But again, Jonas Fenningsen scores a hat-trick in this one. Two early goals and a late penalty from him. This time he was able to take the penalty. Gave us the win. A game which we absolutely dominated from start to finish. The 4-4-2 they played allowed us to dominate possession when we needed it. And we marked any playmakers they had out of the game. Goals from Shishi and Ia in there as well. But five goals and the confidence was flowing Another hat-trick for Jonas... Well, not another hat-trick, but that's five goals in two games for Jonas Fennigsen. He seems to have suddenly found his mojo again, and it was about bloody time, frankly. But it's glad I'm glad he's back. In addition to that, he had turned 18, so I was able to offer him a new deal, which he signed, which means he's now got a five-year deal through to 2030. He's on, like, four grand a week or something. But I figured that was good to try and dispel people that wanted him. He's now worth, like, 1.3 million. So we'll probably get more offers in January. Hopefully we can keep him yet further. That's the plan anyway. I, I refuse to sell him. Next up, we found ourselves up against, at the time, third place AGF, really doing well. But once again, they played a 4-4-2 and we literally passed them off the pitch. Loads of possession, chances for days, Sani Akinola and two late goals from Johnny Ia. He's getting goals for us. Like, we can criticize him all he wants, but the fact is the lad has come in this year and he's going to probably get to double figures for us this year with barely starting any games. And I don't think I can ask much more from a super sub type of striker. Sani Akinola in this game was sensational though. A 95% pass completion. He got one of the goals and I think he also assisted an EA goal. What a perfect performance. He is injured for today's game, which is annoying. And this is where things started to take a turn for the ridiculous. We went away to FC Copenhagen and we won. And it wasn't just like 
you know, we scraped to win. We absolutely battered them in this game. Um, loads of opportunities. They mostly shot from range, and we let them because they didn't have any opportunity to score them. Yeah, fine, Their first, our first goal was an own goal, but then Sani Akinola, who really should have been credited with the first goal, it wasn't like it deflect. It was a shot that was clearly going on target that deflected off of Linus Volquist and into the back of the net. Thankfully, Sani Akinola grabbed himself another one, basically. And then Johnny Ia yet again wrapping things up with a late goal, but they weren't very good. Copenhagen have really struggled to play games um, after, I think it must have been, yeah, after they've had a Champions League fixture relatively recently. Um, on the week after, they've generally struggled. That's when they lost to Kyrgyz. They lost another game in this period too. And then they lost at home to us as well. Not playing in Europe is really helping us out right now. We might actually be able to have a full-on crack at the title, as you can see from this. And then, just to continue this trend, we won 3-0 again at home. It's like we're just getting DNF results, basically. Jonas Fenison grabs another pair. A Stefan Dimitrov own goal. Bit unfortunate for the lad. But once again, it, and then they missed a penalty in this game too, with a chance to actually go in front, I think it was. No, it was to level up almost immediately after we scored. That could have changed the game quite considerably. But yeah, Yet again, chance creation is on fire for us, and we're just control. We're actually stymieing teams, stopping them from doing their attacking and scoring goals ourselves, and it is working a treat. Um, in fact, I think we've actually won every game so far in this episode, which is incredible. Spending some man of the match again, just brilliant stuff from him, truly amazing. And in a pretty ridiculous circumstances, we are currently top of the league, plus twenty three goal difference, six points above Copenhagen with a game in hand. A little run will do that for you. Uh, Budim is still scoring goals, but as you can see, Randers have fallen massively off the pace, down into 11th place now. Uh, really struggling. Suni is looking like the real bottle boys of the league. Um, a weird few teams towards the top, but we've beaten AGF, Lingby, and Copenhagen in a run of three games, which has really seen us take so many points off them right when we needed it. Um, not playing in Europe has been incredibly helpful for us, but we look like we might actually be able to have a go at the league. Copenhagen have already lost twice as many games this season as they did in the whole of last year. It's mental, and I do think Champions League football is taking its toll on them. But then again, we've still had to fill in the gaps, and we have. Another very important factor in this run for me is the introduction of Massimiliano Rocco. Um, he came in after Aldo Safi either was suspended or picked up an injury. It's usually one or the other. He's played four games from the start, and he's averaged a 7.5 rating in that period. He has been absolutely... Well, he's been massive... He's been a rock. An absolute rock at the back for us, the young Italian. And I'm tempted to keep him in the team for now, at least until Pat Curtin comes back, because the performances have just been superb with him in the team, particularly from the defensive standpoint. I think we conceded two goals in four games with him at the back. Three clean sheets in that time, too. Sensational stuff. Anyway, Akinola's picked up a slight knock. I don't know how long he's going to be out for. Uh, oh, well, basically for the rest of this part of the season, which is a bit frustrating. Not to worry, though. Uh, Sergio Santos, is that really the guy we want in that role? I'm going to put Sergio Santos in as an attacking midfielder, but then we're going to bring back here, and we're going to go with Hill Tavares, because... I am a fan of his. Uh, he's done a lot of good work for us when he's been in the team, so I feel like he deserves a chance today. Not sure how Santos will do as an attacking mid, but we'll have to see. Actually, we'll leave him on the bench for this one. We'll bring him on in the second game, get him some match fitness. Um, Chowie, Hansen, Iya, Safi, Morley, and Yakim. Uh, Ursan is still here. He's just fallen down the pecking order a little bit because he has missed a lot of chances in games, and I don't know. I feel like we might want to move him on in the summer. I know he was great for us last year, but it does seem that players are stepping up into these positions now. And we kind of got to think about ourselves financially here because he's on decent money. Although he's a good tutor, so there's that too. Right, so what I've been doing before games this time, I started doing this in the Bromby game. Orborg, we just got lucky to win that. Bromby has started having a look at this sort of stuff. He's looking at the overview, and I know I did this before, and then I stopped doing it because I'm apparently an idiot. But the thing I've been doing recently is looking at this, seeing wingers... Mainly what I'm looking out for is wingers, inside forwards, and playmakers of sorts. Generally, the striker kind of takes care of itself. During the game, you can kind of work out what to do on that one. Uh, they're very defensive and structured. Okay, so they're going to be hard to break down. But the thing is, we're going to basically mark the living crap out of their deep line playmaker and tackle the crap out of their wingers. They've got no inside forwards, so the wingers are basically there to put crosses in for Jensen. And the thing we've got to try and do is stop them from doing that. That's how I think we're going to be at Silkeborg today with this style of play. Sometimes teams play an attacking playmaker here, so... We just mark them up instead, but that seems to be what's worked for us so far. Giving our defenders and midfielders something to do, like some instructions, some real specific instructions, really does seem to improve their performances. We've got to a level where we can actually do that now. So opposition instructions with things like this. I first ask my assistant. Then we know that these two are both wingers, and we know that this guy is their uh, their deep line playmaker. So tight marking, closing down, tackling, and showing to weaker foot. It seems to completely take these guys out of the game when you do that. As for the wingers, since they're required for that, we're not going to type mark wingers. We're going to go closing down, tackling harder, and show them onto the weaker foot. If it's an inside forward, what I'll generally do is sort of the opposite, where we'll type mark them, um, but we won't tackle them too hard, because often they get in the box, and that means you give away penalties. This is what's worked for me over this period, and it seems to work quite well. Hopefully, it will continue today. Silkeball play a very structured style of play, so hopefully we can get through that. So, question of the day, and today's question is this. Do you get tactical info from websites, or do you just wing it? Um, when I first started playing FM, I 
actually didn't really do anything. I just used to wing it. Then I started looking at stuff on websites. But mainly, if you want to learn about how to actually build tactics on FM properly and sort of from the ground up and understanding why rather than just following instructions, then the best thing you can do is read Cleon's blog. I'll put a link to it in the description because seriously, the stuff on there is invaluable uh, for learning this kind of thing with FM uh, direct reporting. So yeah, do that. And if you have any ideas for a question of the day, drop those in the comments too with the hashtag QRTD. Svenningson running through people. Bravo's in and he's missed. That was a good opportunity created by Svenningson and a little bit of dribbles. You can really see how tight Silkeborg are keeping this game. Um, mostly at the expense of their own attacking flair at the moment, it seems. Svenningson slips it through for Santos, and it's what a brilliant move that is. Silkeborg nil, B67-1. Svenningson gets his 11th assist of the season already. Um, he got eight last year in 33 games. He's already got 11 this year in 18. That is sensational. This is just a great move. Shishi does brilliantly here. Svenningson just watches that run of Santos, slips it around the corner, and that is a brilliant finish from Sergio Santos. What a way to go in front, and now we have the lead. Brilliant stuff. I think on balance we've been the better side in this game, but we do just kind of need to get that second goal. Svenningson going around his man. He loves running into those wide areas too and getting the ball back. Tavares, Santos. Shishi probably a long shot coming, hopefully not. Out wide for Rogers Jr. We need a good man in the box now. Rogers Jr. Svenningson. Oh, cleared. Tavares again. Shishi. Carl Rogers Jr. Ball in. Svenningson and it's 2-0. Jonas Svenningson with the goal. Rogers Jr. with the assist. And we've actually made quite light work of Silkeborg today, which is much, much... We've made them look much worse than we did earlier this season. And it does look as if it's going to be, I think, what, a sixth league win in a row? I want to keep a clean sheet at the moment. This is a great ball in from Rogers Jr. Goalkeeper, very, very poor. Svenningson's seventh goal of the season. He's already looking like a man of the match for today. We get to half time at 2-0 and we can really start to work on this for the second half. That's the plan anyway. Oakles again. Ooh, oh, hello. Jensen's in. Oh. And it begins. Christian Jensen gets in between there. Not great goalkeeping. That looked right at the goalkeeper. Um... Maybe I spoke too soon when I said we got the win. This is bad play here. Tavares should do better, but there's still multiple opportunities to clear this situation up. Rocco is a bit caught out of position, but Jensen's not even in the box when he takes the shot on. It's not a good bit of goalkeeping from Canate. We've got to do better than that. However, we are going to have to make some changes here. Santos is going to have to come off. Um, Hansen's going to come in. Tavares has had a poor day, but I think that might be because he got a mistake leading to a goal. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt for now. Um, we'll see. Hopefully Hansen can step in and do a good job in the second half. Because that's annoying. Santos has been all right today. Scored the first goal. We just need to keep things tight in the second half. It's a bad mistake to concede that goal. Hopefully it won't matter. Randall up. Rasmussen. Well won by Rocco. Bravo. He's got Svenningson through the middle. He has to find him. Svenningson's in. Tex. One touch. Finished. There we go. That's the Svenningson that we had last season in places. Silkeborg won. B67-3 this time. Jonas Svenningson just getting that little bit of extra pace and power. Uh, once again, brilliantly won by Massimiliano Rocco, though. Bravo waits perfectly just to get this... Oh, great work from Svenningson. Takes a touch, sets himself, and just slides that past the goalkeeper. 3-1 to B67. Hopefully that's game now. And once again, perfect from Svenningson. So, Tavares. Hansen. Shall we? Svenningson. Moscou's. this is great football again. Ball in. Oh, headed away. Rogers Jr. again. Back post, maybe for Ia. Shall we? Dinks it. Oh, it's in. It's in the back of the net off of Jonas Svenningsen. He scored a hat-trick. I don't know how. It's 4-1 and Svenny has another goal. And this is what I mean. We we've just been able to completely obliterate um, a relatively good side just by taking their key players out of the game. That seems to be the difference from what we were doing before. Chowie's ball inside. I think the defender just clears this against... <laughs> He's cleared it against a stooping Svenningson's head, and he's even pointing to his head. It's 4-1 B67. Svenningson's hat-trick. He's contributed to every goal tonight. Brilliant stuff. Well, it looks like it's going to be a 4-1 win away from home, and I genuinely think the title is within our grasp this season. If we carry on playing like this, it can't not be, really. It really can't. Um... <sighs> Superb performance from Jonas Svenningsen. Three goals and an assist. The defenders played well again. Rocco getting a great score once again. Um, just superb stuff. What did he get? 7.6. All round great performance from most players on the pitch. Superb stuff. Um, but yeah, we've got to quickly get on because my face cam's about to die. But what a result that was. Okay, then we're back on the day of the game against Kurya at home. Uh, a few little things have happened in the meantime. Bravo's picked up a strain, so he's going to miss today's game probably. Santos probably won't be back either. Um, FC Copenhagen got battered in the uh, Champions League again, but they did manage to win the game afterwards this time, but only by a goal to nil, so they're still struggling. The league is getting very bunched up with all the other teams. Like, it's crazy. There's only like three points separating third and seventh place Lingby, who have really slipped off the radar lately. I think FC Copenhagen will start to pull away from the pack. But they've still got to catch us. And if we win today, we go nine points clear at Christmas. That's going to be really tough for them to pull back. But if they, once they're out of the Champions League, I feel like they're going to be super strong after Christmas. So we're going to need all the lead we can get. It's going to be a fun end of the season. I think it's going to be much closer than it looks right now. So obviously with Bravo being injured, we can't use him in today's game. Um, yeah. 
I honestly am tempted, since Sahidi's injured, to start Mark Yakim today. Give him a chance from the start up top with Jonas Svenningsen and see what he can do in this game. Maybe just feed Svenningsen for the entire game. You know, the guy's got 11, no, nine goals in the league so far and 11 assists. Svenningsen is contributing a lot. On the bench, Amoa. Oh, actually, I said I was going to start Amoa for this game, didn't I? Um, actually, you know what? I might just leave it and start Amoa after Christmas because that's when um, he's fully going to be with us properly, I suppose. We can get him trained up as our first choice goalkeeper. Let Kanate finish off the first half of the season. So on the bench, Amoa, Shawi, Morley, Iya, Safi, Hassan, and Stephen Gardner. Remember Stephen Gardner. His contract still isn't up until the end of the season um, when he will finally leave. And he'll probably retire straight away, which is really annoying. But there you go. So Stevie G might get a run out if we find ourselves in a good position. So opposition report. So again, they play a similar system. Jonas Wind is one to look out for. He's the top scorer in the entire league. Both got wingers, attacking midfielder, and a deep line playmaker. So for today's game, similar approach to the one we took about Seagull, but we might also mark up Jonas Wind as well, just because he looks dangerous. We won't tackle Wind harder, because yeah. But generally speaking, I don't type mark wingers because it means that you get your players dragged a little too far out of position. So we'll go with that for today. I personally think that we've got a good chance of beating Kyrgyz. We're at home. They like to play on the break. We're a good side at the moment, albeit one missing Mariano Bravo. And yeah, okay, I know he's not scored for a while. He's kind of gone into Svenningsen mode, although I did chat to him about that. Um, he has created stuff for us. Ericsson's ball. Oh, we'll go short for Rasmussen. Don't let him slip it through. This guy's dangerous. Rasmussen. Zupo. Oh, God. They're good with this, like, really, really tight, controlled stuff. Shishi, here we go. Yakim, look at the space across the pitch. He's got to fight. Oh, what a ball. What a ball. Svenningsen's through. Can he score? No, he can't. He might be able to... Oh, nearly on the rebound. This time, Svenningsen doesn't get the one-on-one. -on -one. They're playing out the back quite a lot, and I worry if... I wonder they might get caught out by us at some point in this game. Tavares, Shishi, Santos, round the side. Yakim, Svenningsen, round the post again. Chances are coming now. I might turn on prevent short goalkeeper distribution, um, just to try and close them down even more in those positions, because we really do seem to be getting a lot of joy there. Ericsson, over the bar. Kanate again. I think this is a matter of time before we find ourselves a goal at this rate. Um, the way we're playing is very, very impressive. Shishi, over the top for Svenningsen again. He's in. Can he get the shot away? This time he does, and it's saved again. Chances are coming now. Just keep pushing away. So we've kind of shut them down, but we've not been quite as creative. I mean, we've actually been quite... Oh, hello, Svenningsen's in again. Can he get through? And a save from Rajic again. Svenningsen is doing a lot of dangerous stuff, just lacking on the finishing today. Eriksson's ball in. Oh, good. It's a penalty to Kurya. <laughs> for all our bluster in the opening moments of this game and the way we've played so well in this first half, we've had enough chances to be two, maybe even three nil up. And now we've conceded a penalty and we're about to go behind just before halftime because penalties are rarely missed on this game. Uh, Wind steps up to be top scorer in the league and it's saved by Canate straight into his arms. And wow, I can't believe he just put it straight at him. Canate just picked this like a cricket. Wow, there you go. Okay, so halftime, nil-nil. I think we've still had the better of it. Yes, they've had the penalty. Uh, Wind is not playing well, neither is Rogers Jr. We're going to try the looking for the overlap option in the second half, I think. Seems to be the plan B in these sort of games when these when you can't seem to get your fullbacks into the game so much is to do this and put them on look for the overlap. And it does see, or it seemed to anyway in the other games when we were sort of struggling a little bit. Um, let's go for assertive. Let's go. I, I think this is a winnable game for us too. We've had chances. Svenningson's not really been on form today. Uh, which is a shame. He does seem to be patchy in places. Shishi, Rogers Jr. in lots more space now. Um, that's better. Getting into more higher areas. Get some crosses in the box. Hmm. Not a lot really happening in this second half as yet. Um, like nothing at all, really. Looks over the top for Yakim. Here we go. Svenningsen's in. He's got to score. He has to score it. Svenningsen! It's in the back of the net. B67-1. Kerr nil. Jonas Svenningsen's played terribly today, but doesn't matter because he's gone and got the, well, hopefully what will turn out to be a winner for us. Rogers Jr., lovely ball into the channel. And there's Mark Yakim into the run. I thought he was going to drill that, but it actually caught everybody out there. Svenningsen with the goal. It's 1-0 to B67. That is a huge goal for us. If we can keep the lead, though. Um... Since nothing I do makes any difference right now, we'll let this one play out. Hopefully they won't score. I'm going to turn off uh, the fullbacks from being on, like, uh, attacking. There's no need for that right now. Svenningsen. Oh, he's lost the ball. Well, one. Oh, Yakim's in. Can he score? Oh, what a chance that was from Mark Yakim. He's offside anyway. Phew. You know what? They've improved vastly, both of them, since we switched this. I might actually be tempted to leave it on this for now. But I might still get Svenningsen off now. Now that he's got his goal, uh, we'll get him off, get Ia on, and maybe turn it off of work ball into the box get a few more crosses in, make things a little bit more fast-paced, uh, see if Iya can't win us a late header or something to wrap this game up. Shishi's had an excellent match, as has Mark Yakim. Okay, we've got to be a bit careful now. I might actually switch these guys off of uh, attacking. In fact, I'll do it now. Oh, Yakim, unless he scores here. Oh, right, now we're doing it. Yakim probably should have put this game to bed there. He's been man of the match by far for me today, which is really nice to see. Um, he's actually stepped up when we've needed him this year. He kind of reminds me a bit of Dan Yazzie uh, in that he's just 
come into the team, done brilliantly right when we needed him. E is probably not going to have the pace to get to that, I wouldn't have thought. Just occurred to me, I actually only made one substitute in this game so far. <laughs> really should uh, rectify that issue. I'm going to get Chowi on for Rogers Jr. just to finish up things there. And also, let's get Steven Gardner on for Mark Yakim. For Steven Gardner's probably going to be his only appearance of the season, but we might as well give him a little bit of a run out in this game. Hopefully, it's not going to cost us. I don't see how it could really, because it's not really a striker that would end up costing us. It's going to be the defensive side of things. Like something like this. Wind! What a tackle from Christian Laver. That is a match-saving tackle from Laver. He should get massive points on his rating just for that alone. Um, round the post there. Rocco, there we go. Chowie. Lots of space. He is never going to be able to catch that. He's not got the pace. That should do it, though. And that looks like it's going to be a 1-0 win for us today. That's actually pretty good, really. And another clean sheet, too. That, that's the key thing for me, is getting yet another clean sheet and another win. That's insane. I think that's actually our most wins in a row ever. It said that the most was seven, and we'd equal it. And that is number eight on, a, on the bounce. Svensson with the goal. Wind missed a penalty. A bit fortunate, but Mark Yakim, man of the match for him. Uh, really good performance from us over... Well, no, not the best performance, but still good enough for the win, I think. And that's how the league looks after the first sort of set of the season. We're currently nine points clear at the top. We've won eight games, I don't think all in the league on the bounce and absolutely flown away from the competition for now second half of the season is going to be much tougher as i no doubt imagine copenhagen will have the better uh, performances in that half of the season but they've still got to try and haul back nine points it's going to be tough i think we still have to play them three more times though so they could still beat us three times and immediately get back in the game but it's going to be tough i think we've got a good chance at winning the league this year if we can just keep things going spenningson has been superb as well so next episode we're going to come back after the christmas break we've got home games against vela i don't know why my computer's just gone all weird over on the right hand side and against esbia i mean these are both winnable games we could potentially win two more games here and really put our stall out uh, and then Sunniusk as well, our home, bottom of the table Sunniusk. Then it gets tougher again. But those three games after Christmas are all winnable, and we could really be in an uncatchable position by then. Um, this could be our year, you know. What a performance. What a run of games we've had. We've only conceded once in our last five league games as well. Defensively, we've been superb. Attacking looking much better. Things are looking up, I gotta say. Anyway, if you have enjoyed this episode, I really hope you have. We won every bloody game. Um, then do, I don't know if you've done that on this save before. Then do drop a like on the video. That would be superb. And if you're new to the channel, I don't know, headbutt the subscribe button or something like that. And uh, join me in the next episode for off Christmas stuff and two games against Vela and Esbjerg. Can we keep this winning run going? Probably not, but hey, it's been fun while it lasted. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.